Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome back. We're continuing to look at partial fractions. Now case 2, which involves a repeated linear factor. We see in our example 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over quantity x plus 1 squared times quantity 2x plus 1 that we have a repeated linear factor, x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's going to change our algorithm, change our process slightly. So let's begin. 1. Split denominator into fractions, a, b, c. The note is that the repeated term requires two fractions. So we'll begin with step 1. 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over x plus 1 squared times 2x plus 1 is in identity with a over x plus 1 to the power of 1 and the second fraction with the factor x plus 1 is b over x plus 1 as a quantity to the power of 2 and our third fraction c over 2x plus 1. Step 2, combine to one fraction. So on the right side we're going to create one fraction with the factors x plus 1 times x plus 1 or x plus 1 squared times 2x plus 1. The a term needs to be multiplied by x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. Notice that in its denominator we have x plus 1. So in order to combine these three fractions into a common denominator, we'll multiply each term by the missing denominators in the individual fractions. So a times x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 plus b. b is multiplied by x plus 1 squared, so we simply need to multiply by 2x plus 1, plus c multiplied by x plus 1 squared. And now we have, on the right side of the identity, created one fraction, one common denominator. Step 3, create identity of numerators. So the numerator on the left side, 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 is an identity with a times x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 plus b times 2x plus 1 plus c times x plus 1 squared. In step 4, by use of inspection of the right side of the identity, I'll identify appropriate x values as inputs to enable me to isolate and solve for a, b, and c. In deciding where to begin, I need to identify where there are shared factors so that by choosing one appropriate x input, I can zero out two factors. And what I notice is that a and b share a factor, and a and c share a factor. So I'm going to begin by keeping b and identifying an appropriate x input that will eliminate a and c. Their shared factor is x plus 1, so I'll start with an x value of negative 1. And beginning on the left side of the equation, 11x squared is 11 times negative 1 squared which is 11 times 1, or 11, plus 14 times negative 1 is minus 14, plus 5. Now I'll go from an identity to an equation, because we're solving for a particular value. On the right side, the first term is a, which will zero out once we input negative 1 for x. a times 0 times anything is going to be 0. Moving to the b term, b times 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1, 
plus and moving to the C term again with the input of negative 1 for x, the C term will zero out. We can simplify on the left side of the equation, 11 minus 14 plus 5 is 2, equals b times negative 1 is negative b, and b equals negative 2. Continuing on to our next solution, again we've observed that a shares factors with b and c, so the next value we will work with is c. I can input to 0 out 2x plus 1, which will apply to both a and b, an x value of negative 1 half. On the left side of the equation, we have 11 times negative 1 half squared, which will be 11 over 4, plus 14 times negative 1 half, which is minus 7, plus 5, equals our a term is going to zero out because of the factor 2x plus 1. When we input negative 1 half, that factor will be 0. We'll be multiplying all of the terms by 0. Plus, moving to the b term, same result. The b term with an x value of negative 1 half will also zero out. And finally, the c term, c times x plus 1 squared negative one-half plus one is one-half squared. The left side of the equation simplifies to three over four equals c times one-half squared is one over four times c. Multiplying both sides by four, c equals three. Now in solving for a, since I have values for b and c, I can select any x value as an x input. I'll replace b and c with their solutions, and the only variable outstanding will be a, which I'll be able to solve for. So to simplify that process, I'll select x equals 0. On the left side of the equation, we end up with 11 times 0 plus 14 times 0 plus 5 or 0 plus 0 plus 5. And on the right side of the equation, we have a times 0 plus 1 is 1, times 2 times 0 plus 1 is 0 plus 1, or 1, plus, and for a moment, I'll put a box where the b term will go times 2x plus 1. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1, plus, and a box for the c term, times x plus 1 squared, which will be 0 plus 1 squared, which is 1 squared, which is 1. Now, the boxes I can fill in. I've arrived at a b value of negative 2, so the b box, I'm going to replace b with negative 2. I've arrived at a c value of 3. So where there was a c, I'll input a 3. And now we can solve for a. On the left side of the equation, 5. On the right side of the equation, a times 1 times 1 is a. Plus negative 2 times 1 is minus 2. Plus 3 times 1 is plus 3. And we can simplify to a equals 4. Notice in case 2 that unlike in case 1, it's important to give some thought to the order in which you solve for your three values. And in fact, that's so important that I'm going to go ahead and update the algorithm. And here it is. Note that in step 4, I've added the note solve for value with different factors last. Looking at our example, step 3, the right side of the identity, A has two different factors. B has one factor, C has two factors, but they're both the same. So in this case, A is the value with different factors, and A is the value that we solve for last. A won't necessarily be the value that always has the different factors. So don't automatically solve for A last, Rather, look at how you've set up your identity in step 3, and whichever value 
is associated with two different factors is the value you'll solve for last. And now having completed step 4, we can go to step 5, write solution. 11x squared plus 14x plus 5 over x plus 1 squared times 2x plus 1 is an identity with a over x plus 1 will become 4 over x plus 1. b is negative 2, so we'll have minus 2 over x plus 1 squared. And our c value is 3 plus 3 over 2x plus 1. And this completes our analysis of partial fractions case 2.